Hi everyone, I hope you are all fine. I welcome you to physiology lecture. In this lecture, we are looking at transport through the cell membrane or transport across the cell membrane. If you remember very well, the cell membrane is the barrier. It protects the insides of the cell. It protects the organelles, such as the nucleus, the mitochondria, the cytoplasm, Okay, now, the cell membrane is a selective permeable barrier. So, not, any, not every substance should go in and uh, not every substance should go out of the cell membrane. So here we are going to look at mechanisms by which substance can enter the cell membranes, mechanisms by which the substance can leave the cell membrane. So we are going to discuss the basic mechanisms of uh, transport. We'll look at passive transport, special types of passive transport, and then we'll go to look at uh, active transport, the special types of active transport, and then we'll look at transcytosis, and then the molecular motors. Now let me just give you an overview. Okay, the types of uh, transport through the cell membrane can be categorized as follows. Those that involve small amount of substances and those that involve the large amount of substances. Those that involve small amount of substances, we have passive transport and active transport. Those that involve large amount of substances, we have endocytosis, exocytosis, and under endocytosis, we have phagocytosis and pinocytosis. However, we can only say that transport across the cell membrane involves, involves passive transport and active transport. It involves passive transport and active transport. Now, what is passive transport? Passive transport is the transport of substances along the concentration gradient or electrical gradient or both. So it is also known as diffusion, also known as downhill movement of substances. Passive transport does not need energy. Okay. Passive transport is like uh, you are driving down the hill. Okay, you are driving down the hill. You can even put your vehicle in neutral and the engine can be turned off. So the vehicle will just move down the hill because there's already a gradient. Okay, up the hill, we have high uh, potential energy. Down the hill, we have the low potential energy. So we can say the vehicle will move from the region of high potential energy to a region of low potential energy. So that's the definition of passive transport. Substances move from a region where they're in high concentrated to a region where they're in low concentration along the concentration gradient. Okay. Now, passive transport, we have... Uh, it can either be simple diffusion through lipid bilayer, like uh, lipid soluble substances like oxygen, water, I mean, ure um, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and alcohol can easily diffuse through the lipid bilayer. We also have simple diffusion through the protein layer, and substances that can diffuse include things like uh, sodium channels, I mean, sodium ions. They need to diffuse through the sodium channels. We have chloride uh, ions, which diffuse through the chloride channel. Now, the protein channels are very important in the cell membrane. The other name for these protein channels, these are actually integral proteins. So each protein, it acts as a gate, which can open and close. Each channel protein is specific for each ion. This is a very important statement. 
Each channel protein is specific for each ion. This is what makes uh, cell membrane selectively permeable. And these proteins, they open up spaces or pores across the membrane and allow entry or exit of uh, charged ions. Now, an example of a protein channel, we have the sodium channel. And the sodium channel, it has three subunits. There is the alpha subunit, the beta, and the gamma. And each subunit has its own gene expression. Among the three subunits, the alpha subunit alone permits the sodium ions. The other subunit accelerates the activity of the alpha subunit. We also have the potassium channels. The potassium channels can be of four types. There are those that, can, that are voltage-gated. Uh, there are those that are calcium-activated. There are those that... Uh, that have the small conductance calcium activated potassium channels and there are those that are inward rectifier potassium channels or there are those which are two potassium channels okay don't worry about those as we talk more of physiological principles will be talking about these so protein channels they are integral proteins. Okay. Now, the ion channels. We know what an ion is. An ion can either be a positively charged particle or a negatively charged particle. Now, these ion channels are controlled by three things. They are controlled by voltage, which we call them voltage-gated ion channels. They are those that are controlled by ligand. Ligand is a, any chemical substance, including hormones and neurotransmitters. And there are those that are mechanically gated. They can open, for example, when there is pressure. The, a good example of these are the Pacinian corpuscles, the pressure receptors on our skin and the hair cells. And the hair cells also uh, mechanically gated channels. And there are those channels which are always open. Like the potassium channel, the sodium channel, these are always open. So let me repeat. The ion channels, it's a channel that allows substances to pass through. This channel can close or open. So what factors can make it open or close. It can either be a ligand, and the ligand, we call it mainly hormones and neurotransmitters. It can also be opened by mechanical means when pressure has been applied or a trauma has been applied. There's also voltage. They can only open when the voltage changes. We'll talk about this when we look at action potentials. Now, what factors affect the rate of diffusion? What factors affect the rate of diffusion? We know that diffusion is a movement of substance from a region of high concentration to a region of low. So what factors can affect this? One, we have temperature. Whenever the temperature increases, the rate of diffusion increases because the diffusing particles, they acquire the kinetic energy. Molecular mass. Whenever there is decrease in molecular mass, the rate of diffusion also increases. Whenever there is decrease in molecular mass, the rate of diffusion increases. So small particles have a low molecular mass, therefore they, they, they easily diffuse at their faster rate. Thickness of the barrier. Whenever there is increase in the cell thickness, the rate of diffusion will decrease. Whenever there is increase in the cell thickness, the rate of diffusion will increase, it will reduce, I mean. And then concentration gradient. Increase in concentration gradient increases the rate of diffusion. 
and then we have surface area to volume ratio. Increase in over surface area to volume ratio also increases uh, the, the, the rate of diffusion. So these are significant uh, application. We are going to look at it later on. I can just give you an example. Thickness of the barrier. There are some diseases that can cause inflammation whereby the cell membrane becomes thick. Okay, or inflammation can change the permeability of the, of the cell wall or the cell membrane. So this will increase the diffusion of substances. And these substances may be eliminated in urine. Okay, so these are the factors that affect diffusion. So that is all about uh, passive, uh, passive transport. Passive transport, I said, it's a diffusion of substances from a region of high to a region of low. And passive transport is just called diffusion. There is simple diffusion, there is facilitated diffusion, there is uh, special types of diffusion such as filtration, bulk flow, and osmosis. All those, therefore, under passive transport.